invite you to remain standing as we lift together our voices and our affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Welcome to St. Peter's United Methodist Church, where we are a church and a people committed to connect connecting the world with God's love. My name is Whitney Pepper. I'm one of the associate pastors here. I, along with Dr. Pat Sparks, as well as our choir and our grace notes, are just so thankful and blessed to have you in worship with us this morning. We would love to know that you're here, and you'll see at the end of your pew or somewhere along your pew a little blue book. If you can grab that blue book and fill it out one page per family or individual and then pass it down to those sitting next to you. You might um, read a name that you didn't know. You can make a new friend after service, but this is where you can put your, um, your name in. Um, but also, if you have any updated contact information, if you've moved, changed an email, a phone number, this is a great spot to put that in there so we can make sure to update it so we can keep you updated on everything happening within the life of the church. Also in that book is multiple places um, where you can leave your prayer request. So if you have a concern that you would like lifted up by our care team and by our pastors in the week to come, we invite you to put that there. But we also invite you to put down your joys because we love to also be able to celebrate those wonderful milestones in your life with you and your family as well. If you are joining us online, there'll be links for you to be able to do all of those things so you can participate in the life of the church. If this is your first time here, we welcome you and we are so glad that you are here. And we have a little gift for you. So if you can, um, at the end of the service, don't get up now. Um, we have, at the info desk on your way out, you can grab that gift. But it's just our little gift and thanks to you for joining us in worship this morning. But we are now in February. And so that means there's so many other things happening within the life of St. Peter's. So we invite you to turn your attention to one of our screens for our opportunities to connect this week. The life of the church goes beyond Sunday mornings and there are so many opportunities for you to gather, grow, go and give with us this week. If you're new to St. Peter's or you've been here a while and you're ready to explore more about what it looks like to become a covenant member, then join us for Explore STP, formerly Peace Pizza with the Pastors, today, February 4th. Come have some lunch, take some time to chat with some, some of the pastors and staff, and get answers to any questions you may have about the church. This is a first step towards membership, but does not require you to make a decision, so you can come explore commitment-free. Come join us for our annual pancake supper on February 13th from 5.30 through 7 p.m. at both the Kingsland campus and the West campus. Adults are $10, children are over five are $5, families of four or more are $30. Register at stpkd.org slash events. The season of Lent begins on Ash Wednesday, which is February 14th. You'll have several opportunities to participate in this day's centered on repentance as we begin our journey through the next 40 days together.
Come drive through at either the West Campus or the Kingsland Campus and receive a mark of ashes from 6.30 through 8 a.m. From 8.50 through 9.10 a.m. in the lobby at the Kingsland Campus outside of ECDC or attend an evening service of prayer, reflection, and imposition of ashes at the West Campus at 6 p.m. or at the Kingsland Campus at 7 p.m. Make sure to follow us on social media and subscribe to our weekly newsletter to keep up to date with what's going on at St. Peter's each week. As we continue with our worship service, I invite you to find whatever posture it is that brings you closest to God as we take this moment in time to go before God in prayer. God of grace and love, this morning we gather. We gather together united as your sons and daughters, opening our hearts and minds to hear from you. We gather putting aside all the things that crowd our minds, setting aside the calendars and to-do lists, to sit here this morning and allow your presence to wash over us. This morning we gather to hear from you, whether through word, song, scripture, liturgy, or prayer. We gather to hear a word that will guide us, hold us, and sustain us, and build us up as we are reminded that you are with us always, shaping, leading, and guiding us. We gather together assured of your presence, guided by your spirit, upheld by your word, and confident in your will for our lives. And because of that, we are able to see and feel you this morning. And because of the guarantee of your presence, we are emboldened by your grace to come before you now in prayer as we lift before you our world, our country, your people, and our lives. This morning we gather to lift before you the places in your world that are gripped in the midst of war, famine, extreme weather, or other forces that cause pain, loss of life, uncertainty, and worry. May we remember as we gather in this place to pray for those who were impacted by these and other things. And may we remember to pray each day that they confidently turn to you to find the peace and presence that will hold them and guide them. As we gather, we recognize that there are places and people in this country and within our community feeling the pressures of life. Whether through work, family responsibility, school, illness, or grief, we know those pressures can weigh down. So we ask, Lord, that they too feel your presence. But Lord, as we gather, we also ask for ways to see in which you have laid before us a path to be arms of support to uplift those around us and to hold them close as they walk through the journey of life. Wherever they come, however they come to us, may we see you in them and offer ourselves to you in them. As we gather, we boldly pause now and lift all of these things up as well as the joys and concerns that lay on our own hearts and lives this morning. As we gather, we ask that your words be spoken, that your path for the faithful foundation of this church be made clear as we covenant and commit to support it through our presence, our prayers, our gifts, our service, and our witness. You have called us, O oh Lord, so now may we hear you as you guide us into all the spaces where we will gather as your people now and in the future. Amen.
As we continue with our worship service, we turn it over to the choir for this gift of music.
before I get into the message today, I have a, um, a message that I want to share with you that's, as you'll see, uh, a little bit time critical. Uh, and so, uh, excuse me for taking this moment to do it, but um, a friend of mine uh, sent me this note. Uh, it says this, my cousin has two tickets for 2024 Super Bowl. Uh, both are box seats. He paid $1,500 for each seat, but he didn't realize last year when he bought them that it was going to be the same day as his wedding. <laughs> if you're interested, he's looking for someone to take his place. He said, it will be at St. Joseph Church at three o'clock. <laughs> I don't even have to finish. Her name's Mary, she's cute and she can cook and she'll be the one wearing white. <laughs> that actually has something to do with the sermon. <laughs> because it occurs to me that some people would do anything together for a sporting event. And I thought about that and realized today we are talking about the importance of gathering together as the body of Christ for worship. Wouldn't it be awesome if people thought it was just as important that they would do anything, uh, not this, but almost anything to come together for worship and for study and for fellowship uh, and for service. What if the body of Christ, the people who called themselves followers of Jesus would go to such extremes to be able to come together as the body of Christ? And it is with that in mind that we're going to talk about gathering together and the significance of gathering together as the body of Christ today. Um, in fact, we look at the, the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 24 and 25, and we hear uh, the encouragement uh, to gather in kind of an interesting way. This is what it says. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. I just love the wording of that, because when I think of the word provoke, I don't typically think, it, I think of it as somebody's doing something to encourage you. I think they're trying to rub you the wrong way. Uh, you know, my, my children, for example, would say, Dad, quit provoking us with those dad jokes, you know. Uh, somehow or another, provoke kind of brings to mind you doing something to irritate. But here, in, uh, the writer of Hebrews is using it kind of like an oxymoron, if you will, that we are to come together to provoke one another to love and to good deeds. And in that, an important aspect of why we should come together as the body of Christ. Uh, we are, in fact, to try to help one another, encourage one another, support one another, and certainly to love one another. So we are to provoke one another. And this is the way that Jesus talked about it uh, in the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 15, verses 12 to 17. This is the way Jesus talked about how we are to provoke one another. This is out of the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one is greater, has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have, that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we say, Thank thanks be to God. I don't know if you noticed it, but in that passage there was two so that's. Uh, and uh, the one that I really want us to focus on is that final one, so that you may love one another. Jesus is saying, I am giving you this command that you love one another as I have loved you. You know, that is a very high calling, to love one another as Jesus Christ himself loved us. In fact, he laid down his life for us. 
And in fact, the choir's beautiful anthem was that very passage being shared with us in music, that we are to love one another as he loved us, that we are to be willing to lay down our life. And sometimes maybe that would literally be that we lay down our life for somebody else. But in so many other ways, we can sacrifice of ourselves and therefore lay down our life to be in service for other people. If you've ever heard a pastor talk about call to ministry, uh, often I've heard one say, well, I surrendered to the ministry. Have you ever heard that before? I, surrend I surrendered to the call of ministry. And really what they're saying by those words are that they gave up their life so that they might do what God had called them to do to be in ministry. Well, with that respect, I would say all followers of Jesus need to surrender to the call of ministry. We're all called to lay down our life, to sacrifice of ourselves for others. Jesus, in this passage, said some beautiful things. He said, I no longer call you servants, but I call you friends. You know, we are ones who seek to serve God even as we serve others. So the title servant is appropriate. But what Jesus is saying is the difference between a servant is a friend is that the master has explained everything that we're about. I've told you what I'm here to do. I have given you the marching orders. You have the insight. And therefore, you're not just a servant who just does what I say. You know the game plan. You know what you're supposed to do. You're my friend because together we come together to serve the people of this world. That is what Jesus wanted us to hear. That is how we are to provoke one another to love and to good deeds, to come together and support one another and share and pray and, and serve together to go out and make a difference, to lay our lives down in service for others. And in this world in which uh, it seems to be more and more divided uh, and discouraged and lacking compassion, uh, we find uh, really solace and strength in the words of Jesus Christ. In this passage, Jesus tells us about the tr transformative power of love and the significance of gathering together in nurturing one another in spreading that word, uh, not only in this community of faith, not only in this community, but out into the entire world. Jesus has set the standard for us. Jesus has shown us what agape love truly is. The word agape being the Greek word for love, one of the Greek words for love. In English, we have so many things that we say that one word for. There's many words for love in Greek, and it goes for different applications. You know, I would say, well, I love uh, chocolate, and I probably should say uh, unsweetened chocolate, you know, uh, being that I'm a diabetic uh, type two. Uh, so I like sugar-free Reese's Cups specifically, if you're ever buying for me. Uh, and uh, so I love that. And then I'll say, I love my children, and I love my wife, and I love my church, and I love baseball. They're probably not all on the same page, if you follow me. And Jenna, I love you the most, but behind God, you know, just want to be able to get out of the room today. Baseball falls way under there, okay? Just... In Greek, though, when the word agape is used, it's that sacrificial, complete, total love, the love that God has for us. And Jesus is saying, I love you. I agape you in this self-giving way, this selfless way, in the way that I would lay down my life for you. I love you that much. Now go love others that much. Go love others in the way that I have loved you. Jesus is sharing with us true, sacrificial, self-giving love, the power of love that transforms the world around us. And when we come together, we can more, uh, it is more possible, if you will, for us to be able to love like that because we're gonna provoke one another, we're gonna encourage one another, and we're gonna support one another as we seek to love the way that Jesus himself taught us to love and the way that he himself loved us. We are challenged to love one another as he loved us 
sacrificially, unconditionally, selflessly. Gathering together as the community will help us actively practice this love as we encourage one another. Jesus declares, you are my friends if you do what I command you. He extends his friendship to all the disciples, offering an intimate and a compassionate relationship that goes beyond the master and the servant dynamic. And likewise, we are called to be friends of Christ who go out loving one another, but seeking to love the world around us. We gather together and that allows us to be nurtured in this friendship that we have and to share our joys and to share our sorrows and to share the challenges that we face in life. And by engaging together with one another, we grow deeper in our understanding of Christ's love and his desires for our lives. Whenever we talk at um, what we call Pizza with the Pastors and today's the first inaugural going to be called from now on Explore STP uh, because people coming to learn about our church and the interest of joining our church, they're going to start that journey by coming uh, and, and attending. Uh, they'll still get pizza, don't worry, uh, but they'll be, it'll be called Explore uh, STP. And one of the things that we like to share there is that this church uh, has a mission to connect the world with God's love. And that mission is all about this passage, right? Uh, we are to be willing to love others just as God has loved us. And we want the world to know that great love. So we're trying to connect the world, all those around us with God's love. And then underneath there, we have a vision and we just uh, voted on and created a new vision that's uh, shorter term than a mission statement's long term overarching a vision statement's typically about three years as we focus on that for a while. And then not that we quit doing those things, but we refocus to other things that we wanna do on a, about a three year period. And so what we came up with for our vision for, for 24, 25 and 26 is to be known by those who come into contact with St. Peter's United Methodist Church and with our members, to be known as faithful followers of Jesus Christ in serving and welcoming our neighbor. I did it perfectly and I got a kudo right over here. Um, so uh, obviously that comes from the great commandment, right? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. And if we can be known as people who have come together as the body of Christ at St. Peter's United Methodist Church, and we have gathered for the purpose of study and of, of worship, of growing in our faith, and then of going to serve and share the good news message, hopefully what people will know about us as members of this church is that we seek to be faithful followers of Jesus Christ. And the way that they're gonna experience that is in our willingness to serve others and to welcome others, right? People need to be welcomed into the kingdom, into the love of God, and that's what we should be about. And when we consider this passage, it is that Jesus is saying, so that you will love one another. He is saying to us, it's so important that we love each other here as St. Peter's. But it's so important then that we turn out and go into the world and love others, even those that seem unlovable, right? There is a way that I, when I think about this, to provoke one another uh, in uh, loving and in good deeds. The word provoke, it, it, again, as I thought about that, I said, you know, there's some church people that really know how to provoke. Um, that I've met along the way. Not necessarily according to this scripture. I, you see what I'm saying? When we go out into the world, there's probably even some more folks that like to provoke argument, like to provoke, you know, and split people apart. They like to provoke problems. Well, what we can do to solve that division and divisiveness and hatred even is to love the way Jesus loves. And he says to us that we are to love one another even as he has loved us. We are to provoke in the good sense, encourage one another, 
to truly love and to go share that message with the world that we might be known as faithful followers of Jesus Christ in serving and welcoming our neighbor. That's a way in which we gather as the people of God, the people of St. Peter's, to go do what God's called us to do, to love one another, to love God and to love one another and to take that message to the world. Our purpose is to go out into the world and fulfill that commandment to love. As we leave this place today, I want to encourage each and every one of you to prioritize gathering for fellowship, gathering for worship, gathering for Bible study, gathering for a small group, gathering for service, coming together and building up. Because it is in the power of gathering together with other people who have the same desire to live our lives according to the will of God that we are stronger together than we could ever be on our own. I've often heard people say, well, I can be a Christian and I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. And I understand that and I would say in a technical sense that is accurate. Because being a Christian is about opening your heart to God and let, allowing Christ in then you're a Christian. And then what do you do from that point, I think is a reflection of how seriously you're taking that relationship. Here's the way I'll say it. If you're a Christian, the word Christian means Christ-like, and that should mean that you're trying to be like Christ, therefore you're seeking to love as he has loved us, and you're seeking to emulate as best you can the things that Jesus did. And if you read the story of the gospel story of Jesus, what you're going to find is Jesus never overlooked an opportunity to gather for worship, to be in the temple, to study, and to teach, and to be with others. He didn't turn away from the Jewish people. He went right to the temple. Uh, he did a lot of correcting of some of the scribes and Pharisees, but he didn't turn away from it. Just because he didn't exactly see eye to eye with the leaders in the temple, it didn't keep him from going there. Jesus was always in the temple, in the synagogue, worshiping God, gathering with the people of God. So if we're going to be Christ-like then, what are we to do? We're to gather together. Not necessarily agreeing with everybody that we meet in the same room with. Not, you know, exactly, you know, <laughs> I always say this. We're, we're not on the same political page in this room. I, I, this might shock you. Uh, you. You may be seated beside somebody of a different political affiliation than yourself. Uh, we don't all think alike on all of our theological positions in this church. And um, again, at the Explore STP, that's one of the things I talk about is how we're diverse in thought, but united in mission. And what we mean by that is, whether you're a Republican or Democrat, whether you're real conservative theologically or more progressive theologically, probably in this church I find there are those ends, and mostly we're in the middle somewhere. Uh, I find that sometimes I think this way politically, and sometimes I think this way politically. Sometimes I'm over here theologically, and sometimes a little bit farther over here theologically. One pastor, in talking about that himself, he said, you know, red and blue, you know, those are colors for certain political parties. He said, red and blue, most of my church is purple, right? And so I believe that kind of describes St. Peter's in politics and in and, and our, and our theology as well. Uh, most of us have some you know, pretty open-minded discussions and willingness to talk with people that we don't agree with. And I think I am a stronger person if I can talk to somebody that I don't agree with politically or I don't agree with theologically. And if I will listen to them and be kind and loving, and if I'll speak from a loving place and a kind place, that both of us will walk away from that uh, conversation better off because we have a better understanding of each other. We may not change our position, or we may, but we always will walk away with a better understanding of how someone else came to the place they are. And we also dig deeper in our own understanding and decision to stay where we are and for this reason. Does that make sense? We grow stronger when we share together. I think one of the things that makes us better 
that makes us stronger as individuals is as we gather with people that we don't all agree with, but we love the same. That, that was one of John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement that became the, eventually the United Methodist Church. He said, though we not all think alike, may we all love alike. And I think that's exactly what we try to strive for here, that we seek to love alike more than we seek to think alike. And uh, that's the beauty of what this passage is saying to us. You are to love one another, Jesus is saying. He's saying, I'm giving you this command so that you would love one another. I want us to leave this place considering what God is doing in our lives, how he has become our friend because he has given us our mission. We know what we're supposed to do. We're to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And we are to love our neighbor, everyone else, even as we have a proper love for ourselves. We have the game plan. We know what Jesus is about. He said, now, go love one another. I give you this commandment that you might, might love one another. Let us leave this place seeking every day to do just that and to be the church right here at St. Peter's where people will say, aren't those folks people who love each other and they show us love in our community and even beyond to be known as faithful followers of Jesus Christ in serving and welcoming our neighbor. That is the so that of this passage. Go and love and help people experience God's love and bring them into the kingdom of God. My friends, that's my hope for you and for me and for this great church. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we are grateful for the ways you have shown us love. And through Jesus Christ, we see the greatest example of agape love. And he has said that we are to go love even as he has loved us. Help us, O oh God, to give ourselves away, to lay our lives down, to lay down selfishness, uh, to lay down all that we do uh, to make ourselves better, uh, to point to ourselves rather than to point to you. Help us to put all that aside that we may truly live our lives for you so that each, things, each of the things that we do are to try to spread the good news, to try to love one another, to try to serve you in all that we do. Loving God, help us to be more and more like Jesus. For we pray this in his name. Amen. As we move into a time of communion, I wanted to remind you of the ways in which you'll be invited forward um, to take communion. To the far left, there'll be a station um, that is our allergen-free station. So if you need that for your health in order to partake in the table that is provided for you. Um, along the, the far aisles um, and the, the center aisle, the two, uh, the two parts of the center aisle, those will be our intinction stations. You'll be invited forward, handed a piece of bread, and invited to dip it into the cup. And in the station here to my far right, um, you'll be handed um, a piece of bread as well. But instead of dipping it into the cup, you'll be handed a small cup of juice. Um, these are all different ways in which we have made it available for all to come forward and feel comfortable partaking in the table. You'll also notice that we have some baskets along um, the way as well. This is an opportunity for you as you come forward after communion to put your pledge card in for the operating budget as well as the capital campaign. So you can bring those forward now um, when you're invited forward to partake in communion as we are reminded that Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Dear, Dear Heavenly Father, Father we lower our heads before you, and we confess that we have too often forgotten that we are yours. Sometimes we carry on our lives as if there was no God, and we fall short of being a credible witness to you. For these things, we ask your forgiveness, and we also ask for your strength. 
Give us clear minds and open hearts so we may witness to you in our world. Remind us to be who you would have us to be, regardless of what we are doing or who we are with. Hold us to you and build our relationship with you and with those you have given us on earth. I invite you now into a moment of silent prayer. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The grace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. It is right to give our thanks and praise. This is where we're supposed to be. It is right and a good thing and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his, his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on uh, all of us who are gathered here today and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ who has been redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as forgiven children of God, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now as those who are assisting with communion make their way here, let me make sure that you are aware that this is not St. Peter's United Methodist Church's table. This is not a Methodist table. It is our Lord's table. It is our Lord who uh, prepared it, and it is our Lord who invites each and every one to come. So you don't have to be a member of St. Peter's. You don't have to be United Methodist. You can come, young or old alike, to receive this bread. Uh, that reminds us that it represents the broken body of Christ and to receive this cup because it reminds us that Jesus shed his blood to bring us a new covenant, a covenant of life forever and ever again. So as the ushers direct you, won't you come with that in mind to receive this sacrament today?
be seated. As we continue with our worship service, we move into a time of giving of our gifts, of our tithes and offering. We don't believe that this is a break or a stop in our worship. We believe this is a continuation of our worship. This is where we get to enter in um, to a time of joyful giving where we give back what we have been blessed with, with the assurance that we as a church use what we give to live into our mission to connect the world with God's love. Um, as you can see on the screen, there's multiple ways that you can give electronically. There's um, different ways. Um, if you're here in the sanctuary, the plates will be passed in person in just a moment. And if you are joining us online, there'll be different links um, that will pop up. 
shortly as well. But one of the things we always like to do um, before the ushers come forward is to share with you a way in which what you give is allowing us to live into our mission to connect the world with God's love. When we gather, as Pat was talking about in his message, we are living into one of our four Gs. And in doing so, we have the opportunity, opportunity to combine gathering with our mission of connecting the world with God's love. We believe we are fully living into and deeply living into who we are at St. Peter's. Last July, with Church Without Walls, we started a regular opportunity for our Courage Worship Service to connect the world with God's love by going to Brookwood and gathering in worship with their residents, their volunteers, and staff. In the last six months, this has become um, something that we've done often. So far, we have gone twice, and each time we spread the love of God through song, message, prayer, communion, and providing a space for all of God's children to be connected with the love of God. And in return, we are blessed as well. Through your gifts, we have established this gather opportunity and we are excited to see it grow over the coming year and years ahead and how God will use it to connect the world with God's love. Thank you for the ways that you have given for the faithful foundation that you have laid and are committing to lay for the future as we find ways now um, and in the days and weeks and months and years to come to connect the world with God's love. And we invite you to continue to give as our ushers come forward.
invite you to remain standing as we lift our voices together in our hymn of dedication. We will be, will, we love, we will be singing verses 1 and 2 of In Christ There Is No East or West. thought I should make clear that I really don't have access to Super Bowl tickets, so don't need to ask me about that. Um, I'm so glad that you're here today, and I do trust that you heard a word that would encourage you and inspire you and send you out into the world to live the good news so people might hear what you say and see what you do and know that you have connected with the one who loves us so much that he gave his life for us and that you want to share that love with others. That is, in fact, our calling. Let us be, uh, take this opportunity to be focused on the cross now as we hear this word of love and, bene and benediction because that cross does symbolize the great love God had for us that he sent Jesus and the great love that Jesus had for us that he died on that cross to give us life abundant and eternal. So let's focus there as we hear this benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you today and forevermore. Amen and amen. If you're comfortable holding the hand of the person beside you, let's do that and sing together, We Are St. Peter's.